Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Game Changer. I'm Mariam Zia. In today's program, we will be talking about two of the important strategic partners of Pakistan with which Pakistan shares uh, deep historical ties as well as we are expanding our ties in different areas of cooperation. Yes, in today's program, we will be talking about Pakistan's growing ties with Iran and Turkey. In first segment of the program, we will be talking about Pakistan's relations with Iran. Of course, we know that recently, uh, Foreign Minister of Iran, uh, His Excellency Mr. Uh, Hussein Amir uh, uh, visited Pakistan and uh, different areas of cooperation were discussed and both countries are uh, planning to expand uh, their uh, trade and economic ties and uh, take it to new heights of $5 billion. We will be talking about the challenges uh, in the economic ties when we talk about Pakistan's relations with uh, Iran, as well as we will be talking uh, about the regional situation, the multilateral cooperation uh, between Pakistan and Iran. In second segment of the program, we will be talking about Pakistan's relations with Turkey. To discuss this and more, we are joined in the studios by Mr. Hanan Hussain, who is an expert in national affairs. Welcome to the program. We are also joined by Mr. Shahjar Khan, who is expert in national affairs. Welcome to the program. Uh, so, Mr. Hanan, let me start with you. Of course, this was an important visit when we talk about uh, uh, Foreign Minister of Iran visited Pakistan uh, earlier uh, last week. Uh, so, uh, what were key areas uh, of the ties that were under discussion and what are your takeaways from this visit? So it was an important visit indeed. Mm -hmm. I think uh, among many takeaways is the fact that the five billion target itself uh, is supposed to kind of mark an upward trajectory when we talk about how trade has evolved between both countries. We do recall that in 2021 a similar pledge was made and then of course there are going to be efforts to kind of advance uh, you know, cooperation and look for sectors that both Iran and Pakistan presently um, are focused on. I think on top of that, there was also welcome focus on, for example, uh, kind of advancing, I think, five of the uh, border market areas as well. Of course. And then uh, talks about um, a bit of an economic zone around that area to kind of institutionalize and formalize uh, their engagements. I think um, among the other takeaways was the energy side of things. So, for example, Tehran uh, expressing its willingness to get through with, uh, you know, export of natural gas to Pakistan and then kind of, you know, working towards finishing this pipeline, which of course in Pakistan's context is really important. And I think um, ultimately both countries are also focused on, for example, thinking of ways to kind of manage uh, financial bottlenecks around that particular project and also see how energy uh, development and cross-border trade in a way can kind of create conducive conditions to take these ties further. Of course, uh, to take these uh, ties further. And Mr. Shahjar, mm -hmm. when we talk about uh, taking economic ties further, of course, uh, previously we discussed in our program about Manpashin border opening a marketplace that was open. Uh, so uh, how do you think Pakistan and Iran can leverage their strategic locations to advance these economic ties, keeping in mind the recent developments, uh, especially in the uh, trade sector between both the countries? So, Mariam, uh, this relationship between Pakistan and Iran when it comes to trade is very historical. Mm -hmm. And uh, unfortunately, it has always been very informal in nature. If you look at the Mand Bashin uh, border market, which was recently established and inaugurated in uh, 2021, I think. So, uh, in, I think we covered in last, uh, in last, last month as well. In detail. Yes. In detail. So these b border markets are th the first uh, uh, action by both countries to basically make this like whole trade arrangement more formal in nature. Other than that, Pakistan is also importing a lot of electricity. So south of Balochistan gets most of its electricity from Iran. Other than that, uh, we're also importing oil, like petroleum products, again, informal in nature, but like that is, uh, that arrangement is supporting uh, a lot of our requirements in Balochistan. So, um, one of the key areas that was discussed and Hanan also mentioned, the Iran-Pakistan gas pipeline. Uh, from the perspective of Pakistan, that's uh, something that Pakistan is discussing. Even in the National Assembly yesterday, our petroleum minister basically said that it is very difficult for Pakistan to take this uh, international obligation, which has Pakistan has signed. It's been over a decade. The work on IP uh, gas pipeline on Pakistan's side is, has been stalled because of the international sanctions on Iran. And that is like something that the foreign minister was also here to discuss in detail, that taking this project forward would be better for the economies of both countries. And we know Pakistan is very uh, energy starved and it could do very well with uh, this import. But Pakistan is not being able to fulfill its side of the obligation and even asked Iran 
to basically suspend these obligations for the time being. Um, other than that, uh, this is like uh, there are like other areas that were also discussed, like uh, prisoner exchange. Uh, of those course. MOUs were also signed. Um, other than that, like uh, exclusive economic zones, uh, fishermen's, uh, you know, that sometimes like go into like the other of side course. and they're of like. Of course, and yeah. when we talk about Pakistan's relations with Iran, neighbor f neighborhood first policy is also important when we talk about Iran's foreign policy. Uh, when we talk about Iran, uh, how do you see that the development of Chabahar port uh, in Iran and CPEC in Pakistan is going to connect both countries and ultimately enhance uh, the trade volume uh, between both the countries? So initially, back in the day when Chabahar port was being uh, developed, India had a very special role and an interest in the Chabahar port. And at that time, some analysts were also predicting that these would be uh, ports that would compete with each other. But because of these international obligations and like the sanctions in, uh, against Iran, India backed away. And now, uh, even after the Iran nuclear deal fell, up, uh, fell apart, and uh, Iran saw that even the uh, European partners could not really revive this deal, Iran is now globally pivoting more towards Russia and China. And with China's increasing role in Iran and China increasingly investing uh, I think like their investments in Iran that they have uh, obligated are over a billion dollars, you know. So they basically want, uh, n f after this uh, arrangement, now Chabahar and uh, Gawadar port now are seen strategically as sister ports. And th there's a lot of like cooper cooperation in the uh, pipeline. And obviously Iran has also, uh, uh, you know, shown its uh, willingness to join the whole C CPEC and BRI network. And in terms of like international uh, bodies like ECO, and especially SCO, Iran has very recently been added into as one of the permanent members of SCO. So that, that, that is a major uh, development as well. Of and course. now we're like basically <coughs> seeing that now this like whole uh, cooperation between Russia, China and Iran, that is like trying to, in, in their own way, uh, go around the international sanctions that are stopping Iran and China is like looking towards now uh, cooperating with Iran in terms of uh, energy and in terms of technology as well. And I think like in the near future we'll see Iran like developing and uh, you know joining the whole international value chain when it comes to Of course, oils. of course. And But first uh, regional connectivity is also very important Hanan mm -hmm. when we talk about uh, these recent developments but border security remains an important issue when we talk about Pakistan's uh, relations with Iran. Uh, so what measures are in place or what measures are uh, required uh, to ensure uh, the cross-border infiltration and illegal uh, migration uh, when we talk about uh, these uh, important you know border uh, locations a couple things so i think on the security front uh, i'd say greater military to military ties and of course intelligence sharing is something that would serve the purpose of both countries i think we've seen um, steady engagement on that front kind of evolve pakistan is very much focused and has a very very good grip over key elements that uh, tend to kind of uh, caused a little bit of a disturbance there for both sides and I think Iran's intelligence also comes in uh, over there. Um, so I think I in in the post-2021, uh, the, the withdrawal scenario in Afghanistan as well, uh, Iran and Pakistan's greater focus on keeping a lid on these, these elements is something that uh, testifies to both countries uh, what they can accomplish on the water front. Then comes the economic security side. So I think the fact that you would want to kind of uh, expedite uh, the, uh, the completion of these um, uh, four to five um, you know, border markets in itself uh, kind of makes it more difficult for this porous border to be conducive to these elements. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you have economic exchanges happening, of course, then Iran and Pakistan have a shared stake in protecting those economic interests, hence kind of advancing border security uh, on the back of economics and trade. So I think uh, the fact that these considerations uh, were, were part of um, the Iranian Foreign Minister's visit over here uh, shows that there's consistent follow-up. We did see uh, pre President Raisi also come over here and then Foreign Minister following up on that. So it shows that economic security and intelligence sharing taken together can form a good enough buffer against those elements. Of course, that is a good enough uh, buffer, but when we talk about this region, Afghanistan remains an important uh, you know, uh, issue. And in this visit, Afghanistan was also uh, discussed because of the evolving situation in Afghanistan. So how do you think that both countries can collaborate uh, for regional stability? So uh, Pakistan is now focusing on the regional partners more and basically convincing the Taliban government to take action, take decisive action 
uh, against uh, you know terrorist elements that are operating from its soil so these uh, um, organizations these are uh, posing threats not just to pakistan but to regional countries as well and especially iran so they have a joint uh, incentive on curtailing these issues so pakistan is also talking to the central asian states pakistan is also taking its case to you know turkey iran and like taking them on board on like building some sort of like an alliance and like convince trying to convince uh, the taliban government to be be more decisive in that nature so that is like something that is like affecting pakistan and we know and even the foreign minister also um, you know presented his condolences on the recent attack that uh, took place of course. and uh, recently in the national assembly as well it was also discussed that this attack was conducted by unfortunately by an afghan national uh, when these like uh, links were uh, you know uh, investigated so these are the areas in, in which iran needs to be taken on board as well and a regional framework needs to be developed there is already a, a regional uh, framework against terrorism under the umbrella of sco Hmm. and Ag uh, afghanistan is also a member in terms of uh, it's so, uh, so not a permanent so let's let's talk yeah. about this multilateral cooperation mm -hmm. um uh, what are some of the key issues of course afghanistan remains one of the important issue but other than that islamophobia mm -hmm. is one of the issues that was uh, discussed in mm -hmm. this visit as well and both countries are collaborating uh, on this as well what are some of the key issues on which uh, uh, both countries are collaborating on uh, these multilateral forums so uh, when it comes to uh, under the umbrella of the human rights uh, uh, the issue of islamophobia the rising in incidents of uh, islamophobia in the west they were discussed in great detail other than that uh, uh, you know pakistan also appreciated uh, iran's support to pakistan when it comes to illegally occupied jammu and kashmir so iran has also supported pakistan in all international forums when it comes to these human rights issues other than that now that iran is an active member or permanent member of the sco iran has a greater role to play when it comes to regional security as well and economic cooperation as well mm. uh, other than that uh, uh, when we basically discuss uh, trade relations and like taking the trade volume to 5 billion dollars that is not possible unless or until the whole regional cooperation or connectivity framework is there and it's like active and unfortunately because of the international sanctions on iran and the security situation and the non recognition of the regime in afghanistan this is uh, creating a huge hurdle hmm. so and and uh, other than these important uh, two issues what are key barriers that are hindering uh, the smooth trade between both the countries and how those issues can be addressed so international banking channels are a big uh, you know um, you know area where there needs to be cooperation Iran and Pakistan have discussed various uh, other platforms in which they can uh, trade can take place so barter trade was uh, discussed mm -hmm. in great detail and uh, some sort of like arrangement even through these border markets is in the works so uh, obviously it's a complicated process uh, there needs to be domestic banks that need to be involved and these frameworks have to be you know uh, formalized keeping uh, in view uh, the trade volumes from both sides a lot of work on that has been done and for the time being unless or until there are new uh, you know uh, systems that are being developed by china uh, which have the potential to bypass the international swift arrangement as well unless or until those systems are there and in place we'll have to come up with an arrangement which is like more uh, focusing on barter or you know uh, to bypass like international financial sanctions as mm -hmm. well pakistan has to keep in mind that pakistan recently moved out of the gray list of fatf as well so it's uh, playing a very safe Uh, game when it comes to international trade and especially uh, dealing with countries that are facing international sanctions right uh, when we talk about uh, these developments of course um, uh, transportation and connectivity remains an important uh, issue uh, uh, what do you think is the progress on the infrastructure development between both the countries of course we discussed about sea pack and chabahar port uh, but other than that uh, what are the hurdles and what needs to be done to address those I think um so when we narrow down that question to for example what Iran is basically looking at within its country and elsewise um I'd say I'd say Iran's proximity to China for example has kind of Uh, advanced uh, Iran's hope of benefiting from the Belt and Road uh, even beyond CPEC. So CPEC remains a huge component of that exercise. It could be a game changer for Iran, which is under a lot of financial constraint. Uh, but Iran is increasingly focused on long-term projections with China to build infrastructure and also plug its capacity building. So um, tangible results on that front are slow to come. But the fact that uh, Pakistan and China are focused on kind of inaugurating the, the second phase of CPEC, and we see a lot of traction coming from Iran's other 
other partners, for example, Turkey as well, kind of gives optimism to the fact that those countries can jointly focus towards infrastructure building more. I'd say Iran presently is a bit more focused on its core power strengths. So we talk about energy supplies and all that. Uh, Pakistan's own power sector could kind of leverage those strengths as well. So when we talk about infrastructure building, um, presently for Iran, hard infrastructure is a priority, uh, but the fact that both countries are looking to kind of plug their dependencies on the energy front makes that a bit of, a, bit of a more attractive proposition under key multilateral frameworks. Of course, and uh, to discuss more about it, we are also joined online by Dr. Hasnan uh, Jawed, who is economist and uh, expert in international affairs. Welcome to the program, Dr. Hasnan. Uh, when we talk about Pakistan's relations with Iran, of course, uh, this recent visit was important and both countries are aiming to increase uh, the trade volume to ambitious uh, $5 billion. Uh, what is the current trade volume between both the countries and what are some of the sectors on in which both countries could be focusing on? See, first of all, uh, this is the era and uh, what we call it, it is uh, economic rationalization. We have decided with the whole region that we have to have the economic rationalization. And under the economic rationalization, is if I go previously uh, with the Pakistani imports, so in, uh, Iran, non-oil export to Pakistan increased by 18% in previous Iranian calendar year, uh, which has ended on March 20. And then in the Pakistan war, uh, was uh, Iran's fifth largest export market in the previous calendar year, uh, importing non-oil product from worth 1.488. So uh, precisely, if I tell you in 1998, it was 18 point uh, $18, uh, uh, I mean, uh, around in 2021, and then it's uh, export to, uh, 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 from Iran to Pakistan is about uh, $614 million to Pakistan, and the main product is about the petroleum, gas, refined product, and electricity. Uh, everybody knows that we are getting the uh, 100 plus megawatt from Iran, and we are dealing with the uh, barter trade, we are dealing with the uh, oil, we are uh, we are dealing in the domestic product, we are dealing with the other commodities, which is very much good. And we have uh, already issued an order, a uh, special ordinance uh, for the bilateral trade uh, and uh, uh, other competitive advantages. But as far as the uh, neighborhood first, uh, this is the idea of the Iran, the neighborhood first, which is very much important. And now Pakistan and Iran set a target of 5 billion for the trade, uh, bilateral trade, as the two countries chalked out a five-year trade cooperation plan to enhance the cooperation, right, right. And, and the five-year trade cooperation is planned aimed to removing uh, embed in the bilateral trade. Yeah, of please. course. And and when we talk about these economic ties, what do you think is the shared vision of both countries, and should be a shared vision of both the countries to achieve uh, this uh, target of five billion dollars? Yes, very much. I'm, I mean, believe in me that this is a, a first time ever after a very long time it was been started, but uh, never been ended like anything. But under the SAFC, under the Pakistan military vision, uh, under the new uh, juncture, uh, we have done that Iranian Foreign Minister Hussein Amir uh, emphasized and has bilateral cooperation in the field of economy, trade and tourism. This is the major three uh, areas which was right. done, which is being done, but not on the very professional way. So now it is on a very professional way, on a documentational way. So both country, uh, countries are committed in increasing the bilateral trade uh, to 5 billion and agreed to set up an, a special economic free trade region along the common uh, border point. And the very important point is the completion of Pakistan-Iran gas pipeline, extremely important. And the Iranian foreign minister said the project would definitely serve the national interest of the two countries and both sides also signed the agreement and memorandum of understanding cooperation between the Pakistan and Iran. And uh, more focusedly, I'm telling you, we will work more about the uranium power project, infrastructure project, commodity, and which is more than 56 product. And yes, of course, we are having the best of the best diesel out of Iran. So we must have to work more uh, specific on the two areas, which is one uh, one is petroleum and second is the power. So uh, if we uh, uh, collaborate in both areas, because whole of the Balochistan and the Iran is, uh, uh, I mean, to me, if, uh, if from my lens, it is both one. So why not we have uh, trade uh, into the much uh, more bigger version? So uh, initially it is 5 billion. Uh, let me tell you, uh, as by my calculation, if it goes well, it, uh, it could give us $25 billion uh, dollar 
uh, up in the next 2028. Uh, of course, and that is a very ambitious target, of course, when we talk about Pakistan's relations with Iran. Uh, there are a number of areas in which both countries are collaborating, uh, but uh, there is a lot of potential as well uh, in collaborating uh, other areas if we address the key challenges when we talk about these bilateral relations. We will talk more about it, but after a short break. Come back, we were talking about Pakistan's relations with Iran and now we will be moving towards Pakistan's growing ties with uh, Turkey. Of course, we know that recently uh, Vice President of uh, Turkey visited Pakistan and uh, different areas of cooperation were discussed in this important visit. We will be talking about these multifaceted uh, areas of cooperation between both the countries. Uh, when we talk about these areas of cooperation, of course, uh, Mr. Hanan, uh, what do you think were the key areas uh, specifically when we talk about security cooperation and defense production between both the countries? Well, first of all, there was a welcome intent to kind of advance and evolve uh, the level of defense cooperation that we've seen. I'd say uh, with the Milgram project, we've seen um, uh, four of the Corvettes kind of, uh, you know, see the light of inauguration and also the fact that uh, Turkey wants to build on these understandings and go, go forward. I think one classic example is uh, Turkey's early intent to potentially involve Pakistan as part of its Khan aircraft uh, program, combat air aircraft program. Um, that's a very important one, which has also seen participation from from a select Central Asian states such as Azerbaijan and could really uh, position Pakistan um, as part of a more uh, you know competitive profile within uh, Turkey's you know um, defense industrial uh, complex and also how they want to uh, view things. I'd say uh, the other point of focus was I say the admission from um, uh, Vice President of Turkey that both Pakistan and Turkey are facing regional security threats that uh, are part and parcel and common to each other. So he pointed towards cross-border spillovers, something which uh, Pakistan and Turkey could uh, better manage by sharing their experiences and going forward. Um, and I'd say that that particular aspect coupled with defense cooperation and Pakistan's potential involvement as part of Turkey's combat aircraft program uh, are, say, are great wins both for the industries as well as um, for the navies as well. Of course, uh, Dr. Sen, when we talk about uh, this important visit, the joint launch, uh, launch of Melgam was an important event. Uh, so how do you think this is going to enhance the strate strategic cooperation between Pakistan and Turkey? Uh, it is uh, one of the, I mean, uh, I, I could call it the best venture ever because and uh, now uh, 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 Turkey also realized that the economic rationalization is much important than any other thing. As the president of the uh, Tayyip Erdogan told him that we need, uh, we must have to have the secular nation, we must have to have the better ties with America, we must have to better ties in the whole region. And it is very much important to first we have to have the good relationship with our own neighboring country. So, uh, Gavadar is a very uh, important uh, area for the uh, Turkey, otherwise they could not have the supply chain, better supply chain in this region. So the joint venture project an example of the cooperation and support between two brotherly countries, it is tangible step toward the self-reliance and indigenization and uh, it would fulfill the critical uh, security need of the Pakistan Navy. And it benefited the ceremony, uh, I mean, uh, the, in ceremony, Prime Minister Shabazz Sharif and visit the Vice President of the Turkey, uh, they launched the fourth MILGEM uh, warm ship, uh, as uh, uh, Mr. Hanan uh, uh, telling you about uh, in detail, which is very much important. And it was initiated in 2018. Now, now, it, it would be completed at very soon times, which is very good. And, the, and second most important thing is the Prime Minister said Rajab Tayyip Erdogan was a great leader, which has reflected by his wonderful victory in the recent poll. And that gives the, gives the uh, paradigm shift, what we can call it. And then we have to celebrate each other's success stories and also stand together in the face of challenges. But the bilateral trade is very much important. And second most important uh, thing uh, uh, regarding the CPAC, the China-Pakistan economic corridor roaring the success like prime minister said the pakistan and china have agreed to launch the second phase that would uh, comprise green co uh, corridor 
business corridor special economic corridor and it corridor so all these four corridors will be interacted with the turkey so this is very much important as i told you the green corridor business corridor special economic corridor and it corridor they are we we are going to have with the turkey which is uh, very much positive in the nature and this uh, natural partnership heightened the opportunity of the region connectivity being proved by the cpac and the naval chief said also of course, upgradation of, of the course, karachi uh, sapan uh, yard what what we call it sip yard uh, be key the improving the pakistan self reliance and through the government was also striving to develop another sip yard in uh, gawadar of course uh, this is very important but when we talk about uh, economic ties uh, the uh, evolving security uh, situation in the region is in, uh, also an important issue when we talk about pakistan's relations with turkey as well so let's talk about the security and defense production ties uh, between both the countries and how important was uh, this event and uh, what are some of other areas in which both pakistan and uh, turkey can collaborate further of course because we know we both share historic ties is uh, but there is there are a number of areas in which both countries are not uh, reaching their potential so mariam one of the most important things i see when this uh, whole defense cooperation is like going towards the most important thing or the key takeaway that i observed was the transfer of technology mm. so generally pakistan has been very dependent on the western capitals for their defense needs and uh, recently we've like seen that pakistan has developed a strategic relationship with china when it comes to the jf17 thunder program and now uh, with turkey when it comes to the uh, production of these uh, corvettes so two of them were produced in um, uh, turkey two of them were produced in pakistan and pakistan's uh, karachi shipyard and en engineering works that basically uh, partner with the the uh, turkish uh, you know so are there some owned. specific initiatives that are focused on the defense cooperation and technology transfer and knowledge sharing between both the countries so now that like technology transfer and knowledge sharing has been conducted between pakistan and uh, turkey and their this was their joint venture now pakistan navy is going to expand this program and they want to develop like around 40 more uh with cooperation with uh, turkey of course so this like uh, relationship is like moving more uh, towards uh, uh, navy as well as uh, other areas as well and pakistan is also cooperating with turkey when it comes to drone technology as well so turkey is like you know technol technologically it's like very sound and its uh, defense production is like very up to the mark because it's a very active member of nato as well so turkey has a lot of like access to international you know uh, technology that the western countries use we also need to keep in mind that Tur turkey is also part of the f16 and the f35 uh, program as well and when uh, pakistan is like facing you know sanctions or international resistance when it comes to upgradation of its uh, you know air tech and uh, you know other uh defense needs turkey is the country that basically comes forward and supports pakistan in upgrading pakistan's uh, you know technology as well as uh, you know uh, aircrafts and other areas of course. as well so were there any discussions on joint initiatives that are focused on research and development specifically when we talk about defense sector so i think um the khan air aircraft program in itself is something that has already invited uh i'd say a dozens of pakistani workers that are involved in kind of uh, building and advancing um uh, that project and i think pakistan's potential inclusion could point to uh an upgradation in their uh defense relationship and i think on top of that uh the fact that uh turkey's uh, own industry uh shipping industry identifies as one of the top 10 in the world producing these warships is an excellent opportunity for pakistan to continue to contribute to this uh you know this very symbolic and a very effective form of defense cooperation through the milgam project and then build on top of that i'd say uh, one of the reasons why we believe uh, i mean there there's optimism there's reason to believe that turkey and pakistan are going to build on this momentum is because uh you know it was pointed out that um in order to have a more um strong grip over the regional security and maintain a balance within the industry that's what the turkish side has said uh it said defense cooperation is really really important so we could see defense cooperation also assume a bit of a more a counterterrorism edge as we've seen mm -hmm. uh from the vice president's remarks and also serving pakistan's interests and industrial expectations Of course uh, uh Dr. Sen when we talk about uh, uh, security of course that is very important but let's talk about economic relations between the two countries uh, are there some investment opportunities uh, for uh, traders on both sides in both the countries when we talk about increasing FDI in Pakistan 
mean, um, as uh, first I told, uh, wanted to tell you about there is a great need of enhancing people-to-people -people content. Of course, uh, uh, the last uh, few summits uh, that gives us the, uh, the the powerful booster to it. So we are joint collaboration in R&D, IT, energy, infrastructure, food security, tourism, and mining sector. So uh, specifically, Pakistan also asked Turkey to invest in the mining sector. Of course, if we do not uh, invest, because major investor is the Saudi Arabia and other, uh, the filthy countries are uh, investing in that. But the mining sector is a too big uh, sector. So it is about the six trillion of the project. So we uh, we are focusing on uh, to that. But otherwise, I mean, the, as far as the food security, infrastructure, and most probably the textile sector. So their textile is eventually uh, it is very uh, innovative, but their uh, textile uh, quality is not that good what we have in Pakistan. So we can collaborate in a better way. So Pakistan has a skilled labor force and abundance of the natural resource, while Turkey has advanced technology that can be merged to become the leading textile manufacturing wo uh, uh, world, which I'm uh, emphasizing. I'm emphasizing again, they don't have the text, uh, the, the, the best of the quality textile, but they have the uh, uh, I mean, technology. So in that the second phase, similarly in the clean energy sector, joint research facilities could be established by the development of the clean energy resource and including the cheaper and better solar energy. They have the uh, good source for the uh, solar energy and uh, better equipment and, uh, and they are used to with it uh, as we have, uh, we are li little lack in the uh, adjustment of the solar system and energy. An exciting opportunity have emerged for the collaboration, especially after the historic trade in the good agreement between the Pakistan and Turkey have become the op operational on May 31st in this year and appreciating the strong bilateral cooperation. So, so as uh, Mr. Shehbaz Sharif and uh, under the SAFC, we are very much focused on to the uh, bilateral trade in a very specific sector and which is a uh, mining sector, which can be the food and security and much of all, which is textile. Of course, these are important sector, but when we talk about Pakistan's uh, relations with Turkey, of course, uh, there are brotherly relations and historical ties. But can you tell us and elaborate on the nature of strategic ties uh, between both the countries, specifically when we talk about uh, the cooperation on multilateral forums? Yes, on the multilateral forum. So, of course, all the time, uh, I mean, Turkey, uh, uh, I mean, uh, support us in every possible way in, in the whole world. For example, they they veto to us. They 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 they, they prove their brotherly relationship when we need it in in aid. And uh, as we discuss about the thirty billion dollar of the aid when we were in the uh, in the flood, they have uh, they released a good amount of the uh, the support. So they always support us and uh, on to the international relation, we are the Muslim powers. So Pakistan and Turkey is one of the most important Muslim powers and out of the 57 countries, we have the say. We are, we are the part, we are the people that we can establish our narrative in the whole world that, uh, I mean, uh, what we can say is the Islam is a complete uh, secular and peaceful in the nature and Islam is our uh, the, uh, is the ideology would give you the whole, whole piece to the world. So it is very much important to give the uh, give the best result. And uh, Turkey and Pakistan has maintained their ideology that we are secular in every part, but uh, we are we have no relation with any of the terrorist uh, activities. And and uh, and the uh, and the time has decided. Is right. is or any other thing has not been initiated by us. So it is uh, the foreigner idea. It is the uh, the the outside idea it is not from us so turkey and pakistan right. always together and in, uh, into the different forum but we have to be a more power with the 57 country in oic to build a great voice against the india insurgency and in, uh, intervention in pakistan of course, uh, that is very important when we talk about OIC and uh, cooperation on uh, key important issues of global uh, uh, significance as well. But let's move towards uh, energy and infrastructure development. Are there some discussions going on? And what is the potential when we talk about energy cooperation and infrastructure development between Pakistan and Turkey? And how does Turkey perceive uh, CPAC? So Turkey obviously has um, demonstrated a very favorable reception of, of CPEC. We've seen that during uh, you know past invitations from Pakistan mm -hmm. for Turkey and investors to join CPEC. And I think the fact that Prime Minister Shabashri reiterated that at this momentous occasion also fares well 
for their relations. I'd say uh, Turkey's perception about the Belt and Road in general uh, is something that is very important to its own connectivity needs. I'd point to evidence from Iraq, which pointed out a 17 billion road and rail project and said that it wants this to be incorporated as part of China's Belt and Road. And that was an initiative which was linking Iraq to Turkey. So I'd say the fact that uh, CPEC itself has achieved great significant progress in the first phase and is looking to expand is something that's more suited to Turkey's you know, Asia policy and pivot. And when we talk about a key infrastructure and area, I'd say uh, the fact that um, um, you know, CPEC is now approaching a phase which is going to be rich on mm -hmm. uh, IT sector cooperation, green corridors and all that. So that energy transition in itself is something that Turkey is increasingly looking at. True. And uh, you know, the fact that Pakistan and Turkey both have had, you know, regular engagements with China makes that an important, you know, trilateral mix where there are little hurdles and more opportunities to see where they can advance progress. Right. Right, of course. And when we talk about uh, these developments, in uh, tourism uh, remains an important uh, uh, topic. Uh, and of course, people-to-people -people exchanges between both countries is very important. So uh, what measures are needed to, uh, uh, to facilitate uh, tourism between Pakistan and Turkey? So, Mariam, um, uh, the tourism sector between Pakistan and Turkey is, uh, you know, booming. A lot of, of like, Pakistani tourists are going uh, to Turkey. And um, this whole like visa, visa regime can be more, uh, you know, uh, friendly, I believe, because right now, uh, if you have a US or like an EU visa, then you can apply for an e-visa for Turkey, which is very easy. It's like, you know, um, you can get it in like a few minutes. But when it comes to applying, um, you know, through paper and like, you know, the regular process, it takes a long time. So there is there is like room for improvement. There could be a visa regime in which you know e-services could be included. More IT-related solutions could be uh, included. Other than that, there are like a lot of like partnerships that are being developed be between HEC and uh, Turkey, and and there are like a lot more scholarship for Pakistani students are being provided by Turkey, and that could also be enhanced. Other than that, when it comes to academia. Uh, and uh, you know various think tanks. Mm. There could be joint co cooperation research that could be conducted or on various issues uh, when it comes to uh, strategic partnerships. Other than that, academia, uh, tourism, we have already discussed. But I think like there is more uh, uh, flow from Pakistan side to Turkey. But from Turkey side, Pakistan, there is like a lot so more work. So what needs to be done to uh, make Pakistan as an attractive destination? Of course, there is a lot of scope for uh, uh, religious tourism in Pakistan. So what needs to be done in that regard? So I think like uh, uh, there is like more work that needs to be done on conducting tourism fairs. So a lot more like videos and like you know more promotional material can be developed on Pakistan side and like shared with our audience over there. When it comes to a lot of like cooperation, when it comes to production as well, Pakistan is cooperating with uh, Turkey in developing a lot of like TV shows, dramas, historical dramas that have found a l huge audience in Pakistan when it comes to Turkey uh, TV plays, Turkish uh, TV plays as well. And now there's like a lot of cooperation going on between Pakistani artists and Tur Turkish mm. artists. And that like cooperation will definitely reap a lot of like benefits for both Turkey and Pakistan and uh, more work can be done in that direction right, as well. Right. Uh, Dr. Sen, lastly tell us what is the shared vision of both nations, Pakistan and Turkey, uh, towards achieving more enhanced bilateral ties? Other than the bilateral trade, of course, in the tourism, uh, I'm very much, uh, I mean, with the view uh, of uh, Sharjah because uh, they have they haven't given us any ease to the uh, I mean uh, immigration process or the visit visa process uh, on, uh, on the American visa they are just giving us in half an hour and I'll get always in uh, just on half an hour visa to Tur uh, Turkey but uh, on the on the other side it would take rather 30 days and they reject the visa immediately to the Pakistan so this is not a balanced view so there must be some uh, some level playing field balance uh, attitude and balance bilateral trade and of course in a different vision we must have to be uh, ask every other country to be balanced in relationship otherwise it is not the relationship uh, in any case Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sen Javed, for joining us in today's program. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Hanan Hussain, for joining us in today's program. Thank you very much, Mr. Sher Yar Khan, for joining us in today's program. Of course, it brings us uh, to the end of today's discussion on Pakistan's uh, deep-rooted and ever-evolving ties uh, with pa Iran and Turkey. Of course, Pakistan is, is collaborating with both the countries uh, in uh, different areas. And uh, when we talk about trade ties, uh, uh, Pakistan is uh, looking and is 
ambitious to enhance uh, trade uh, relations between both the countries. There are certain challenges when we talk about uh, security uh, concerns and evolving regional uh, situation as well. Uh, but if uh, Pakistan uh, is collaborating with uh, both these brotherly countries uh, and these countries can collaborate on multifaceted areas, uh, then uh, not only it can uh, enhance uh, the bilateral ties of Pakistan with Iran and Turkey, but it could uh, enhance uh, the global prosperity as well. That's all from Game Changer tonight. Take care. Allah Hafiz.